I've been in the Balazong community since 2015. I've learned many things in my years and will continue to do so. I wanted to adjust that most of us starting out have invested in clones or CCCs before even having the thought of purchasing a high-tier USA-made Balazong. Sure, you can argue that the higher-end Balazongs cost significantly more than clones and CCCs, which can be out of a lot of people's budget. But you can also argue that you get what you pay for. I'd like to cut to the chase, alright? No matter how much the community spices clones, there will always be a market for them. A lot of beginners and foreign flippers will be uneducated, and some flippers will just not want to or can't invest in high-tier battle songs. The point of this video isn't to bash on clones, but to educate those who are unaware of clones and to help prevent scams. And in this particular analysis, I'd like to compare the Blade Runner Systems Channel Alpha Beast and its recent clone. Keep in mind, I am affiliated with BRS, but this video is not sponsored and no one from BRS has told me to say anything that I'm going to say in this video. As much as I believe clones leave a bad image on the community, I'm going to be non-biased and give my true and honest opinions between these battle songs. But remember that I do not condone the support of clones. This particular clone was provided by a friend of mine, Clockwork, who obtained it in a giveaway. You can check him out here. Alright, let's get into it. Well, here we are. A beginner and uneducated flipper would barely spot a difference, aside from the Zen and Tank Pin systems. Note that the real Alpha Beast never had a Zen Pin system, so that'd be a dead giveaway. But aside from that, at first glance, these look pretty similar in structure. If you haven't guessed, the clone is on the left, and the real Chab is on the right. Let's go over some specs. The Chab has a handle length of 5 and 3 quarter inches. The blade stands at 4.5, with an overall length of 9.875 inches. As for the clone, it stands about the same. The Chab weighs 5.12 ounces, and unfortunately, I lost the weight specifications for the clone, even though on the site, it is stated to have the same weight. But that's clearly not the case, as the clone felt lighter. Both handles are channel-constructed titanium. The Chab has a smooth but grippy stonewash finish. As for the clone, it's more of a smoother and slippery-like speckled stonewash. The blade material on the Chab is 154cm, while on the clone, it's unknown. Both sport the clip point blade shape, but the clone seems to be lacking towards the tip. The spines on these blades are quite different. The clone has a strong rounded off curved crown, while the real Chab has a crown that is slightly beveled with a smooth profile. As for the pivots, the torques on the clone are smaller than the Chab. You can see that on the back of the pivots, the clone has more of a flat face and is more noticeable, while on the Chab, the pivots sit deep and neatly in its sockets. On the side, you can see that the clone has a deeper opening, as it needs room for its Zen Pen nipple. For the chevrons, the Chab has them at a nice machined beveled edge with deep curved flutes, while the clone has them at a slight boxy curve. Both opening sections of the handles seem pretty similar in size and length, so not much to say there. Let's look at the handle play on the Chab. That's right, there is none. As on the clone, it seems to have a little play, which, spoilers, becomes its downfall in the tap test. When I said that the clone is lighter, it's mostly due to the lack of titanium and handle girth, which makes it a bit blade heavy. I don't have any calipers, but as you can see here, the chab is clearly thicker. Lastly, the inside of the handles show most of the differences. The chab has a chunk of titanium where the spaces would be in on the sandwich version of the Alpha Beast. For as on the clone, it doesn't have that. It's just straight out empty. So that's about it for the specs and close-up details. I'd like to cover some sound tests. You may notice that the clone has a loud ring to it, close to what the squid trader would give off. I don't hate it, but I don't like it either. As you can tell, the clone has some tap, but let's try to fix that with the tools that it came with. it still got tap. Rip. I ended up putting some lube on these guys. I'm using Benjamin's Blue Lube. This stuff is so smooth in my strong opinion. It's also what brings the sounds of my battle songs to life. Not a sponsor. Wink wink. 
After that, it gave the chab a slightly satisfying click and ring to it. As for the clone, I think the ring got a little muffled. Well, that seems about it for this comparison. I spent a couple of weeks with these guys and honestly, the chab is superior in so many ways. It feels like a finished product, and it comes full circle when I say that because BRS intended for the Alpha Beast to be channel constructed in the first place. The weight on this beast is kind of perfect. It's not too heavy, nor is it too light. It's balanced. I didn't have any problems with the handle or blade weight. It might be the perfect BRS balisong. The clone is alright. In hand, it feels smooth and gives a nice click when flipped. But the smooth, thin handles have a similar feel to an Amazon Trainer balisong, which kind of makes it feel cheap. The balance on this is a little off, and it stands to be more blade biased, which can throw off chaplains. It's a shame that it is a clone. Honestly, if this had a different design and didn't call itself Chab, it would have been able to stand on its own in the community. But since it's a clone, it just loses all of its credibility. So what do you guys think? I'd like to read what you guys have in mind about this whole topic of clones down in the comments below. Also, please be civil. We're all grown here, right? Well, thanks for watching. As always, please like, comment, and subscribe for more, turn on that notification bell, and I'll catch you guys on the flip side.